Hi, scrolling along with Susan. Hey, this is my second video that I'm going to be doing that is preparing me for a trip that I have coming up for the UK. And when we're out and about for lunch and we just want to pick something up maybe from a grocery store and eat, we need to have eating utensils. And I have some forks that we'll be taking that are very lightweight, but I don't really have any spoons that will work well. So I'm going to be making my own. Now this is a piece of maple and it is one and five eighths inch wide and it is about five eighths inch deep and I'm going to be cutting a spoon with it on my scroll saw. As you can see this is a children's spoon but it doesn't really have the, the depth that I want on it but that is going to be the width size of it and probably about as long as this. This is a real nice piece of maple and I think it's going to hold up quite well. So basically what I'm doing is just drawing the shape on it right on this piece of wood. Now a lot of your scroll saws will cut one and seven eighths inch to two and a half inches. So make sure you're not making it wider than what you can cut on your scroll saw. This here is make sure you're cutting the side profile matching the bowl part of your spoon and the bottom of the spoon will be the same spot here so I'm going to be cutting out the side profile first and this bottom part here is going to go up to where the spoon is. I made some adjustments to the side profile so the more that you can cut on the scroll saw, the lot less you have to do sanding. Now this is too narrow to keep level on the scroll saw. So I am going to use clamps to hold it securely. My other homemade clamp system is not long enough. So I'm going to have to make another one real quick. I'm going to use these same uh, nuts and bolts and I'm going to take one inch size, thick size pine drill the holes and just make another clamp system real quick. Make sure if you have to make one of these that you don't make it too tall. Remember you only have two to maybe two and a half inches on your scroll saw to work with. So this is going to give me one inch of support on both sides. I think that'll be fine. I drilled these holes at the same time so they were even and flat on the bottom. So they line up, and I think these will work out really nicely. Now, of course, you don't have to use this big of a um, uh, bolt. You can use a smaller one, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm using. Your piece in between your two pieces you're holding down are nice and flat, or you're going to end up with a crooked spoon. I've also drilled a pilot hole right here to insert my blade to try to keep the piece together as much as possible on this side before doing the flat, other flat side. My blade of choice is a Pegas MGT-5R. You don't have to use a reverse on this because you're going to be cutting this as a, um, you know, the profile on both sides and your piece cutting out is going to be the smooth part. So you could use just a straight blade a uh, five would work. It depends on how hard your wood is that you're going to be cutting. Now, this is maple. It's pretty hard. Um, I think this five will work just fine. first part is cut. I'm just loosening the bolt so I can remove my piece. I don't have to tape this together because it's going to be held tight and secure by my clamps. This top part will be much easier because it's only 5 eighths inch thick. On this 3D cut, the top part and the bottom part will be waste and your spoon 
will be in the middle. Now it's time for me to grab a pencil and start marking where I'm going to be gouging out for the spoon and anywhere that I really need to concentrate on smoothing over and making the spoon thinner on the bulky parts. And this will be underneath, it will be the handle, it will be everywhere on the spoon that I need to do a lot of sanding. I want to hollow out the bowl of the spoon and I have this Beaver Craft spoon carving kit. I'm going to start with that. Now this is hard wood. It is going to take a long time to do this. The spoon carving kit is taking a bit too long so I'm switching to my Dremel and I'm using a carving kit and I'm going to remove most of what I can this way. Then I'll go back to my spoon um, carver. I find that this part takes a lot of practice and patience and finding that right tool that will carve out the spoon. It's definitely coming along and making a nice good dip here. Now I'm back to my spoon carver. You will find for a project like this that you'll be using many different sanding tools. This is a bench grinder, a variable speed bench grinder, and I just have this sleeve with sandpaper wrapped around it, and I'm going to be starting to work on the outside of the bowl. I purchased these bench grinding sanding attachments through Judy Gill Roberts in Tarja Studios and you can find her information online and purchase the whole kit through her. Back to hollowing out. Don't forget to test it. Sometimes there's nothing better than actually seeing if it fits your mouth right. Now comes a lot of hand sanding. Make sure everything is smooth. I have sanded it. Oh, the final sanding was with 220 grit. The handle is a little bit wider for me to hold on to it. And this holds about three quarters of a teaspoon. And I'm really happy with that. I've got a real thin lip up here, which is what I want. It's very comfortable in the mouth. What I have put on this is pure tongue oil. And this is a food grade safe tongue oil. You could also use mineral oil for this. Now what I understand is mineral oil actually lays on top and seals on top. Tongue oil actually penetrates into the wood and helps it become a little bit more waterproof. And I'll let it sit for 24 hours and reapply again and put at least two coats on this. I have applied my second coat of tongue oil and before I did that I decided I wanted to drill a hole at the bottom here in case I want to put a string through it and hang it up and hang it from a belt or something like that. I'm really happy with the way that my little travel spoon turned out. It is so lightweight and compact. It'll fit really nicely in my purse. And this is only about the second time that I've used tongue oil on a project. I am very impressed with it. It smells great. There's not that toxic fumes you have to worry about. It is food safe. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but it is so well worth it. You also don't have to sand in between applications. So I think I'll be using it in many more projects. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.